Welcome back. If you are new to the channel, my name is TJ Erickson and today we are doing one of my favorite things and that is targeting walleyes on some mid lake structure. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a lot of different tips, tricks and show you a lot of different locations, kind of those spot on the spots, some things to look for as I break down some of this mid lake structure for some of these midwinter walleyes. So we've got lots of information coming at you today. Stick around. It should be a fun one. Well, like I said, we are out targeting some walleyes on some of this mid lake structure and it is absolutely brutal out right now. We've got, I don't know, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, blizzard like conditions. It was 30 or so below this morning. Um, it has been some pretty miserable conditions, but we're out, we're seeing some fish, we're catching some fish. And right now I am out on some mid lake structure. I'm actually on a hump um, around me is surrounded by about 26, 27 feet. Um, and one of the things that I absolutely love, one of my favorite things to target on this mid lake structure, um, the first one that I'm gonna talk about is some of these little points that are off of these humps. That's where we're at right now. Um, I'm kind of off the edge a little bit. My buddy Grant is a little bit more up on top. We've both been getting some fish. We've both been seeing some fish moving through. Not a lot of big ones just yet, but you can definitely tell this is a high traffic area. There's some fish moving through here. We don't have anybody around us, which helps a lot when these, oh. that looks like a little bit bigger fish. There we go. There we go, we are recording good. Oh no, I got some ice built up on my line. There we go, got off. That was like an ice chunk, not even build up. Not a big one, but a nice quality fish. There we go. That one is on that leech flutter spoon by clam. Just a solid fish. You could tell when that one came in, it was a little bit thicker. Get that guy out and we'll show it off to the camera here. That is a nice quality fish right there. Awesome. So much fun seeing these things come up and eat on the live scope, especially as they cruise through this mid lake structure. They seem to be feeding so much more um, when they are on some of these pieces of structure. That one's gonna be good for the fish fry tonight. Like I was saying, we are out targeting some walleyes on some mid lake structure, and I love fishing mid lake structure during the winter time, especially this mid winter time, because there's something that the fish can relate to. There's going to be high traffic areas. Fish are gonna be moving around these reefs, moving around these humps, whatever they are. So these are typically great high traffic areas, and when you get some fish moving through, a lot of times they are going to be hungry. And one of the things that I like about these spots is typically there's some sort of unique structure whether it's um, a big rock or a pile of rocks, there's something down there that can hold fish to this area and something that these fish are gonna be cruising around. So I'm off the edge of this right now. You can see where it kind of comes up on my live scope a little bit. And I'm sitting in about 25, 26 feet. So there's definitely some fish moving through. It's a high traffic area, which is great to see. And so far the fish have been fairly aggressive, which is awesome because sometimes during this midwinter time, um, even when you're on some of these areas where they're feeding, they're not always going to be in the mood. So that's kind of where we're set up right now. I'm gonna keep fishing here and then I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the other areas that I like to target when I'm fishing some of this mid lake structure, kind of those spot on the spots, if you would, on some of these reefs or some of these humps. Hello. Good, I'm catching one, hold on. This one seems like a pike. A little bit of pike action as well. Get that one back down. See if I can jig this guy up. Yep, jeez, that pike just got down. This one seems more like a walleye, not a giant walleye. Oh, I don't sogger. That one was on that leech flutter spoon. So I'm just gonna kind of pan around here to show you what I'm seeing on the live scope, kind of where I am. As you can see off behind me, that is the top of that little point that I'm on that's adjacent to this hump. And as I kind of pan around, you can kind of see it gets out to some of that deeper flat area. I keep moving around. That is getting closer to where the big main part of the hump is. You can see a couple different layers on there. And as I kind of pan around, you can see right behind me is that smaller little point that I'm on right there. 
and then it kind of drops off and back down to the other side. Some of the other areas that I look for when I'm targeting some of this mid lake structure during this time and like that mid winter time of year, um, one of the things that I look for is steep breaks. Anytime you can get steep breaks, especially if it goes towards where the base of it is, that always seems to hold fish and has fish cruising through there. One of the things that I do find with that is sometimes that can be a little bit more of that um, early morning, late evening bite where they just kind of cruise through there. They might not hang around as much, but it is going to be a high traffic area where those fish are going to be moving through. Another thing that I like to target on some of this mid lake structure are some of these inside bends. Sometimes you can actually get these on top or off the edge of some of these humps. Sometimes it's at the very base, but anytime you can find a good little inside bend, again, it's just some sort of little irregularity that will hold fish or kind of group fish up for a little bit longer period of time, get those fish around you for the most amount of time as possible. So anytime you find some of those kind of unique contour lines or some of those different looking areas, that's a little bit different than whatever the rest of the hump is looking like. If it is all steep breaks, then you might be looking for a little bit more of that flat. If it is all kind of a slow taper, then you're gonna be looking for more of that steep break or a little bit of that hump that's on top or a point adjacent. Something that's gonna be a little bit different than what the rest of the hump or rest of the mid lake structure has to offer. Those seem to be my best areas because it's something that's different that's on there, something that can draw those fish in and attract those fish. And obviously the more fish you have around your baits, the more luck you're gonna have. The other one that I really like to work is the very tip of a point, especially when it gets to be a very sharp, like a, a pointy point, I guess you would say. Yeah, you know, those, those pointy points. I really like to set up on those on that very end, right at the tip of it, you have a lot of that kind of deep water and a lot of areas that can access right to the tip of that point. Another one that I think can be overlooked, oh, we have something moving around down there. There it bit, doesn't seem big. Eh, not bad. It isn't, you know, your 10, eight incher like you do get um, out on Lake of the Woods sometimes but it's not a giant. Good little walleye. We do have another one cruising in off to the right. Show them off real quick. Oh, oh, darted up but missed. Oh no, get back down. That one seemed okay, maybe similar. Oh, now it's coming after that one. Nope, it's coming back. This guy's still around. There we go. On the jig and wrap. Man, I'm so surprised that one came back around because I think I stung it a little bit that first time. Decent one. Oh, a decent sauger. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. So much fun. I love having these PC Fun Carbon X 1000s on, when, especially when I am on. Oh, got another one coming up. Oop. There we go. Oh, no, I got one. I might end up keeping this sauger anyways because it's been out for a little bit here. And it's a little bit better sized sauger. Oh, so much fun. When you can double up on fish, there is, ooh. Oh, this one is dogging me a little bit better. Another good one. Oh, just a sweet fish right there. That one just came and thumped it and this JT walleye snare just did its job so well. I was able to just let it sit in the rod holder. It hit it, I could see it go but it didn't feel it because it has that soft tip. I'll just get this guy down quick. I'm gonna keep the other one. I don't need any more walleyes, but might keep a couple saugers here. Woo, woo. There we go. Awesome. Just a nice, healthy fish. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that sauger. It was a nicer sauger, but it was just choked, so it was bleeding a little bit. So. I'm gonna keep that one. And another quick side note on a little bit of conservation. Um, if you're having pretty good luck and you want to keep a limit of fish, um, if you're gonna keep fishing to catch and release, I would keep one open or maybe a couple open in case something like that happens. I haven't been keeping any, oh geez, this guy's coming down right away at it. Oh man. Jeez, that's so cool to watch them dart. I'm gonna let it go all the way back down. I think that's what he wants, yep. That's what he wanted, he just wanted it all the way back down. You can see as I was dropping it down, it wanted to keep chasing it, but I stopped it before so I could kind of see it. Man, that is so cool. And that's again why I was wanting to use that jig and wrap so I could get up and down quickly, don't have to mess with any bait. There we go, not a big one, but an aggressive one. So I think I started talking about 
three different things and I don't know if I finished any of them. But the one that I was just talking about is conservation. Keep a fish, maybe two fish, especially if you're having some luck, keep some of those open in case you gut hook a fish because that's something that you can't control. Um, that way you're not having a fish that's gonna die and you're not gonna be able to get some use. So I typically, Try to keep a fish, maybe a couple fish open, just in case that happens. Oh, we got my buddy Grant calling me. Wonder if he's catching some fish here, caught a big one. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, it is so cold. Let's see what he got. Oh, look at that, a big old burb. So much fun, Lake of the Woods, you can just catch just about anything. Awesome, let's get that one back down. Oh, those things are just so squirmy. Sweet. Nice work. Oh, sweet. You gotta love a good burb. I'm gonna finish talking about what I was talking about at some point here. Like I was saying, this can just be such a fun bite. When the fish get going, they really get going. Oh, speaking of that, come on. See if he wants it on the drop. Does he want it on the drop? Yep, he did. Wanted it on the drop. And that's what always happens in the summertime too. These fish just love to trap it to bottom, get it close to that bottom. Oh, just a tiny little guy. So much fun even for these tiny little fish. And again, that's where I'm really happy that we're not fishing out in deep water and why I try to avoid fishing out in deep water. Because many of those fish would be dead right now if I'm fishing out into that 30 to 35 range, which is sometimes, especially on the south side, can be a necessity in order to catch fish. So being able to fish some of these reefs can just help with that mortality a ton. Just like, ooh, I don't know if this is the same one. This one feels a little bit bigger. Ooh, I might have snagged it. You can almost see how it's coming up a little bit goofy, <clears throat> but it's also fighting a little strange. If it's not snagged, it's, yep. Like I said, I didn't think it was very big. <laughs> almost snagged it right in the keister. And that happens a lot um, because they'll try to trap it to the bottom and when you jerk up, you'll sometimes just accidentally stick them. So I think the one I left off on is one of the areas that can often be overlooked is sometimes when you have a little bit of this flat area on these humps, um, a lot of times you'll see it. Maybe there'll be a steep break and then it'll be a little bit of almost like a feeding flat, but sometimes you'll just see a circle on your graph. And often what that is, is a rock or a little pile of rocks. It's just a little something that they picked up while they were charting the lake. And sometimes it turns out to be nothing. Um, but one thing that I do a lot is in the summer, I'll drive around some of those areas when I see just some of those little discrepancies on some of those contours is I'll drive around them with my side imaging to see what they are and more often than not they tend to be a little pile of rocks or maybe a stick sometimes I've even seen a boat um, but they tend to be something that they're picking up while they are charting the lake but that is another sneaky little spot on some of this mid lake structure and something that like I've said can just hold fish something that can attract fish and keep fish in an area for a little bit longer a couple other general tips that I have when you're targeting this mid lake structure is one starting deeper as it gets closer to evening move up shallower so starting deeper moving up shallower as it gets closer to dark and also don't be afraid to try the very top or the very bottom of the break or the hump or reef or whatever it is that you might be fishing so there you go finally finished some of my tips and tricks some locations um, next time you're out going out for some walleyes try some of this mid lake structure and just look at some of these maps see if you can see some of these on some of the lakes that you're fishing because more often than not when you find some of these areas on the map they are going to be something that fish are going to be moving around they're going to be high traffic areas and something that might even hold some fish for an extended period of time there i was finally able to get through some of that without getting distracted by a fish but I'm not gonna complain. And I know what you might be saying, yeah, you're on Lake of the Woods, anybody can go up there and do that. And let me tell you, I've lived up here and spent most of my life up here. And I can tell you what, yes, it can be like that a lot. But especially within the last five-ish years, it has gotten much more challenging and there can still be some very challenging days up here. So um, it is a super lake, a phenomenal lake, and we had a ton of fun today. I'm um, looking forward to what tomorrow is going to bring, but we're going to get back, um, get everything kind of regrouped, get batteries charged up, have a little fish fry tonight, and we'll be back at it tomorrow.